Hey, I'm Becca with the Happy Ever Crafter, and in this week's tutorial, I'm showing you what to use and what not to use when you're doing lettering on acrylic. Let's jump right in. So first things first, as always, let's talk about the tools. So of course, I have my piece of acrylic here, and this is just an eight by 10 piece of acrylic. I got this at the art store local to me. Um, not all art stores will carry acrylic, but some of them do. You can also get it at hardware stores. So like Home Depot, Rona, Lowe's, wherever you live, what the hardware store is, a lot of them carry um, acrylic sheets. They're also just called plexiglass sometimes. And if you don't have any of those stores in your area, there are usually like specialty retailers that will sell and cut acrylic for you. And actually that sometimes will end up being cheaper than the hardware store. There are different types and different thicknesses of acrylic, but um, generally I find there, I mean, there's not a huge difference, difference between a lot of them. As much as it sucks, usually the most expensive acrylics are the better quality acrylics. So um, they're not cheap to begin with, but the more expensive they are, usually the better they are to work with. And so I'm just gonna put this under a piece of black paper so that you're going to be able to see what I'm writing. And then for my pens, I have a Bistro chalk marker. So these are in order of how easy they are to remove from the acrylic. So this is a Bistro chalk marker and um, I use this lots on lots of different projects. This doesn't have to be Bistro, it could be any chalk marker. Then I have a Sharpie water-based paint pen. I have a Posca pen, a Sharpie oil-based paint pen and a Molotow one for all acrylic paint pen. So this one has two tips, um, different sizes on it. I'm just gonna use the bigger one. I just tried to pick pens that were all approximately the same size so that we're comparing apples to apples here. That's it for the pens. Then let's talk about what I'm gonna use to show you how to remove it from the acrylic. So of course I just have dry paper towel, always handy. You could also just use a microfiber cloth if you don't have paper towel. I have Windex or any window cleaner. I have acetone. Mine just happens to be uh, strawberry flavored, which is really weird because it's not something you ever wanna drink. But uh, anyway, any acetone. And then I have a bowl of coconut oil. Obviously, first thing I need to do is actually write on the acrylic, and I'm gonna write a word with each of these pens. But the first thing I wanna mention actually is usually when you go to write on acrylic, and obviously any signage you're gonna do calligraphy or lettering on, you wanna have a guideline on it. And with mirrors or glass, it's okay to use a pencil like this Stabilo Aquarellable, which is just like a, a waxy sort of pencil that'll go on and do a guideline for you and I actually really love this pencil. You can use it on acrylic but when you're using acrylic you need to be really careful that you don't scratch it because you can't get a scratch out of acrylic and it'll just ruin it. Um, so this pencil as great as it is for glass and mirrors and stuff like that I don't really recommend using it on acrylic because there are other ways you can get guidelines on here instead of trying to damage it potentially with this waxy type of crayon. So what I would do instead is because it's see-through, you could actually just put a piece of grid paper underneath or you could draw your guidelines on paper first and put it underneath your acrylic and you don't have to, have to actually mark up the surface at all. Or you can just use tape and have your guidelines that way. But I usually try to stay away from drawing any extra guidelines on there. Okay, so first thing I need to do obviously is write out the words in each of these pens. So I'm gonna just do these in order. The first one is the chalk marker. Next up is the Sharpie water-based. After that, we have the Posca. Then Sharpie oil-based. And lastly, the Molotow acrylic paint. And so I think that because I did these in order of easily removable to more difficult removal, it probably comes as no surprise that it also gets more opaque as you move down towards the bottom. So you can see in the chalk, it's a little bit 
choppy and not super opaque and then it gets gradually more opaque as we move down here especially with the oil and the acrylic paint so there are definitely advantages and disadvantages to each of these pens and the obviously the opaque opacity is one of those advantages but there are also disadvantages when you go to do removal so i always tell people as much as possible where you can with acrylic signs you want to try obviously to not make mistakes and so where i was mentioning earlier that in your um, setup process you could put a guide sheet underneath your acrylic it's really handy because you are much less likely to make a mistake and to need to remove um, when you're removing from acrylic it's really easy to scratch it and mess it up and it's really expensive so you want to try to not do that and depending which pen you're using, it can be easier and more challenging. So let's say you have a client who is okay with their lettering coming off really, really easily because they want this to be removable. They want it to be able to be used again. Chalk is a really good option. So the first way that you would look at removing it is just with a dry paper towel. And I would just wrap this around my finger and I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure on it and slide it right across and you can see that the chalk will be removed with a dry paper towel. So that's really easy. It's an advantage if you don't care, if you're not worried about people walking up to the sign and touching it, then chalk is totally fine because you can easily remove it. You can easily change up the sign and use it many, many times. The next more durable option would be water-based. And so same thing with this one, dry paper towel. If I run it across, it'll come off but it's not quite as smudgy as the chalk. It comes off in more of chunks. And so if you had a client or a guest just walk up and touch it, it doesn't necessarily smudge off just from being touched, but if you were to touch it with a little bit of pressure, it'll definitely come off. So it chips off a little more than it smudges off. Next up would be your Posca pen. And same thing, a little bit of pressure over top of this one. And it's really similar to the water-based Sharpie where it'll come off if you put some pressure on it. But if you were to just rub your finger against it really gently, it won't come off. If you put a little more pressure, it will. So again, these two are both a little bit more durable than the chalk. And then we get to the oil and the acrylic. And if I have my dry paper towel and I run it across, it will not do anything. You can put quite a bit of pressure on these ones with your dry paper towel and it won't come off. So that's a really big advantage if you're doing a sign somewhere that will be in high traffic or that would be touched or that you wanna be permanent for the long term. So oil and acrylic are definitely the more durable options. The next step up other than a dry paper towel would be Windex. So I'm just gonna spray a little bit of Windex on my paper towel. And of course you'll see that the chalk paint will come off really easily with Windex and then the water-based Sharpie and the Posca will also come off really easily with Windex. A little bit more rubbing required than with the chalk pen, but it will come off. And it'll make a bit of a mess right off the bat. So you just have to use the, uh, use the Windex over top of the painted parts. And then once you've got this kind of mucky mess, I would grab a new piece of paper towel a little bit more Windex on it and just tidy it up. Okay, so now we've got the two more durable options left on here. And if I take this same piece of paper towel with Windex on it and I try to take off the oil or the acrylic, it doesn't come off. So these again are a really great option if you are using, if you're doing it for a sign that will be touched. And the great thing about this is you don't have to worry as you're working about getting fingerprints on it because of course, when you're finished with it, you can even go over it with Windex and take off any of the smudges. So I could either use a dry piece of paper towel and take off any of the smudges from my hands. No worries about touching over top of this. It's not gonna smudge off. Or I could put even a little bit of Windex and take off my smudges that way. But let's say you really were working along your sign and you made a mistake with your oil or your acrylic. Your next option for removal would be acetone. And so again, mine's pink because it's a weird flavored version for some reason. Um, and when I say flavored, obviously I mean scented because please don't drink this. But you would just put this on your paper towel and it's gonna remove 
your oil paint and your acrylic paint really, really easily. Now the disadvantage to this is that it's stinky. It's obviously really bad for the environment. It will take off your nail polish <laughs> if you have any on. That's why mine is coming off. Um, but it's a really, really great option for removal. It's really quick, it's really clean, um, and it's fine to use on your acrylic. It's not gonna scratch it up or anything. The other option, if you want it to be a little more eco-friendly and if you're willing to put in a little more elbow grease, is using coconut oil. So this is my little bowl of coconut oil and you can just put it on your paper towel and rub it on these. And again, it's gonna take a lot more elbow grease than it would with your acrylic, but it will come off eventually. Your coconut oil will break down the oil paint and take it off. So I'm not gonna spend all day doing that removal because like I said, it'll take a while, but if you're concerned, you can definitely use that. What you don't wanna use are anything with a little bit of grit. And so this is just a random one I'd found at the hardware store that I was hoping would be good, um, but it's a little bit gritty and it kind of mucks up my acrylic. And same thing with this Kiss Off. This removes oil paint, grease, blah, 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 um, which is lovely, but because it's gritty, it tends to, if you put it on acrylic, it scratches it. And like I said earlier in this video, acrylic scratches really, really easily. And so if you put anything gritty on it, it's gonna scratch and it'll muddy up your acrylic and it'll be toast. And so I don't know if you can see in this example, but this is a piece of acrylic that I used this easy strip stuff on and it left it really muddy. So that is not fixable and that makes your acrylic garbage. Hopefully you can see that kind of shadow, like it's, it's, I don't know the right word for it, foggy, foggy is the word. So you really don't wanna use anything gritty because it scratches super, super easily. And every once in a while you can like take a piece of dry paper towel and buff it off, but it still generally doesn't come fully off and it ruins your acrylic. So again, my recommendation, like my number one is um, acetone. Um, it's just a little bit harsh. And then you could also use coconut oil if you need to. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just use acetone and wipe the rest of this off. Again, it comes off so, so, so easily with acetone. So that's why it's my favorite. And then when you're Acrylic is all cleaned off, might be a little bit dirty, so I would just use Windex over top of it, just like you would with glass or mirrors or anything. And that's it. So hopefully that was helpful for you and gives you a little bit of clarity on which pens you should or shouldn't use on acrylic. And if you are a person who is interested in making lots of wedding signs or calligraphy signs or lettering signs for whatever events, chalkboards, wood, glass, acrylic, any of that. I actually have a brand new course called Signing Up. Get it? Signing up, like signs, but also you should sign up because it's a course. <laughs> anyway, I have a new course called Signing Up that's all about all of my tips and tricks, how to do all of those signs, lots of different resources in there. And so if you're interested in that, you can go to signingupcourse.com and check it out. And I'll see you next time.